Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. In this video, we're going to conduct a little experiment on some unconventional flow media for vacuum resin infusion. Let me talk a little bit about what flow media is on vacuum resin infusion. We're trying to create a carbon fiber sample that we can do some testing on. And in this case, it's two layers of a 2x2 two two twill with 3K toes. It is 200 grams per square meter weight. And then we have a peel ply on top of the carbon fiber. Now this peel ply is one I have not used before. It has a release agent on it. And that's supposed to make it easier to peel off the part than your typical peel ply that has no release agent on it. And the reason I want to do that is I'm making really thin parts and the typical peel ply pulls very, very hard and I'm worried that I'm damaging my part when I'm removing the peel ply. Particularly with a flow media on top of it that makes it thicker and stiffer and more difficult to pull off. Now on this part, I'm going to use a vacuum that is pulled over on this side and there is a spiral tube running down along this edge that will pull the vacuum and any excess epoxy. To try to reduce excess epoxy from running out, I have stopped my flow media before it gets to, let's go ahead and show it, to my spiral tubing. I will have a cup of epoxy resin over here with the tube coming into this inlet and that epoxy, when it gets pulled in by the vacuum, run down spiral tubing on this side and then it'll run down into this flow media and the part underneath, and of course the pill ply, and then it'll start getting sucked along here to the vacuum side. Now the purpose of the flow media is to help the epoxy flow down through here and air to flow out. Let's say we left the flow media off, and, but we kept the pill ply on. That means the epoxy could only flow through the peel ply and it does not flow through peel ply lengthways at all well. There's a tremendous amount of resistance. So it would generally have to go down and flow through the fabric. Now on this fabric, it's not too bad for flow. If it were a spread toe, it would not flow through that at all well. It's because the threads in the toes are much more compact, closer together, and it's hard for epoxy to flow through that. And that epoxy would probably only flow about that far and would not be able to go any further. It's just the epoxy is too thick and there's just not enough pressure from the outside to push it through. The purpose of the flow meat is to create a easier flow area for epoxy to go through. It can come through and soak down into the part and air is much easier to come out and flow out. Now, if you've seen some of my past videos, you'll notice, recognize this flow media. This is two layers of insect screen that I got at the local Home Depot. And I stumbled across this because I had been using some commercial flow media and it allowed the epoxy to flow too easily. I wasn't getting enough epoxy going down into my carbon fiber. So in order to try to force a little more down to the carbon fiber, I finally found something that would restrict the flow just a little bit on top, a little bit more than the commercial flow media does. But it would still serve its purpose to have epoxy flow on top. Well, this is kind of expensive and it, I have to cut two pieces in order to get it to work. And it also has an odd uh, behavior of creating channels along here when the two pieces of screen aren't quite perfectly aligned. You don't want them perfectly aligned because then it doesn't flow very well. I tried one layer's insect screen, and that wasn't enough. I was almost like not having any flow media at all. Two layers, there's enough open areas between those two layers to get epoxy to flow through. When I was at Oshkosh 2019, this about a month ago, uh, Russ Imanis suggested using garden shade cloth as a flow media. I thought, well, now that's kind of interesting, and you can get, usually get that through your local home supply stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. I was looking online at what the cloth looked like and I realized it looks a lot like the mesh tarps that you can get at Harbor Freight. 
So I thought, well, let's give that a try. So I went to Harbor Freight and got some mesh tarps and I've cut a piece out and I put one layer of that mesh tarp down. And so this experiment is to find out if the mesh tarp works better than the two layers of the insect screen. Well, off camera, I'm gonna put my vacuum bag on and get my hoses hooked up, get my catch pot hooked up, get my vacuum hooked up. I am going to pull a vacuum on the part, number one, to check for leaks, and then number two, to pull out any excess moisture that might be in the part, because I don't want that when I put my epoxy in. Then I will mix up my epoxy and we'll come back and watch the resin flow through the part. I did a vacuum test and that looked pretty good. I have now run a vacuum on the part for about 20 minutes. I wanted to suck out any moisture that might be in the part. I've mixed up 170 grams of epoxy and the epoxy I'm using is the ProSet INF 114 resin and the INF 211 hardener. This is an epoxy resin that's intended to be used for vacuum infusion. The pump I'm using should be able to pull 28 and a half inches of mercury. The shop temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. While this infusion is running, I am going to have a timer on it and every minute or two minutes, I am going to draw a line on where the infusion front is, where the epoxy is reached. That will kind of give me an idea on the flow rate between the two types of flow media I'm using. Everything else should be equal. Now I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump and that's going to make a lot of noise so I probably won't talk. I might try it a little bit. If it doesn't work I'll do a voiceover. Okay, I'm opening up the clamp on my input feed line. I'm looking for it to come up the tube. It's right here, it looks like. Whoop, now it's feeding. Yeah, I can see it going down into here. I can see it starting to come out. Okay, that's going a little too fast. Let's slow it down. Okay, I may have, I may have uh, slowed it down just a little too much. Let's open it just a little bit. When I said it was too slow, it looked like it had almost stopped. I can see some flow now. Okay, let's try that and see how that looks. So I'm going to mark this at the two minute mark. That'll give us a good idea how much it's flowing after a minute. Good. Now this one's really flowing over here at the edge. Okay, that was at two minutes. I'm going to mark that as 2.0. Forgot to mark that. It comes four, there's four. So flow rate has slowed down just a little bit. 
on both my samples. Now occasionally I will release the valve a little bit if it starts slowing down a lot. This is a little bit slower than I like. That's a half inch per minute. I usually like a little bit more than that and this of course is significantly less. Okay, that's a little too slow. Let's uh, pump it up a little bit. Now you'll notice that over here on this insect screen side, there's a load coming out, and a load coming out, and a load coming out. And actually there's a little one here too. And that's because the screen is crossing like this, and there are certain places, like where I got my fingertips are, where there's lots of area that can flow through, and then up higher, like here, it's kind of blocked. So this is the blocked area, and then here's the flowing area, and then there's a blocked area, and there's a flowing area. There's six minutes. Oh, yes. Okay, so we just did six minutes, and you can see the rate is much higher. That's not too bad. I think we'll let it run at that rate for a while. As the flow front gets over towards this edge, the pressure difference is significant. This will be getting much closer to ambient pressure. And if I try to open up this more to try to get flow to come through, this will get even closer and closer to ambient pressure. And what can happen if I open this up too much is I can actually get siphoning where it will pull epoxy out and down in here just due to gravity and siphoning and we can actually have epoxy build up and bulge out our vacuum bag. Alright, it looks like our flow front is slowing down a little bit. This one was narrower than this one. And that should happen as you get more and more epoxy across here. Since your pressure difference is getting less and less, there's less vacuum to pull all the way across and so the flow front will get slower and slower. So we've gone far enough now to definitely say that this flow media flows easier than this one does. Now the only question is going to be will I get a good mold surface finish on this one, I'm almost positive I'll get a good one on this side. And we'll know that about 20 hours from now. Okay, I'm going to let just a little more epoxy come through. Just so that I know, I'm going to say I opened here. Well, you can definitely tell I opened it up. There's a huge gap here relative to here. Um, that might have been a, just a little too much. And they're over, even over in the side, you can see it's went faster. So I'm going to uh, slow it down just a smidge. When this finally gets over this edge, I'm going to open it up more because I know this can flow faster and still give me a good mold surface finish.
four hours since we started pulling the vacuum on our part. After about 12 hours, I turned off the vacuum pump and let it cure another eight hours before I went ahead and pulled off the uh, vacuum bag and the peel ply. I want to go over real quickly, again, what the flow rate was on our two types of flow media. So we had our two layers of insect screen on this side, and we had one layer of mesh tarp on this side. Well, as you can see, the distances between the lines, which were at one minute intervals, are much wider on our mesh tarp than on our two insect screen layers. Now, I've always had really good luck with the two layers of insect screen giving me a fully filled mold finish. In other words, the, the mold side of my part had the weave completely filled. So I wanted to find out if this mesh tarp would give me a similar result. Well, I didn't expect it to since it flowed so much faster than the insect screen did. I thought I would have something similar to the commercial meshes that I've tested. And just as a reminder, where this little dotted line is here is where the epoxy had made it to by the time it had made it all the way across the flow, the uh, tarp mesh. And that was 17 minutes. And then it took up to 23 minutes for the insect screen to finish. Now I got a little impatient and as soon as the uh, tarp mesh finished, I went ahead and opened up the spigot a little bit wider on my infeed tube. And so you can see that the distance between lines here is a little bit wider than here. So we have, so I increased the flow rate a little bit and I wanted to see if that had an impact on my insect screen. Well, let's take a look at the finished part. So this is the finished part and this is the peel ply side of the part. And by the way, this was the first time I'd ever tried peel ply that had a release agent on it and it did pull off easier. So I'm very happy about that. So as I've done with all my other samples, since this is two-sided, I decided to copy this information on both sides. The only difference is the type of flow media I use. And so this one had a tarp mesh, and this one had two insect screen meshes. Now on this side, there is a difference. You won't be able to tell it, and I don't think I would be able to capture it on a photo. But the insect screen side is smoother than the side with the mesh tarp. And that's just because the openings on the mesh tarp is a little bit wider than the openings on the insect screen. So the insect screen pushed down a little more even. So that's interesting to know if I ever have a situation where I want this side to be smoother, I think the insect screen would be a good option. Now I have a good fill on this side and I've always had pretty good fill on this side. So I'm not surprised at that, but let's look at the mold surface side. Now I've marked which side's which. This is the tarp side. This is the insect screen side. This is the direction that the epoxy flowed through. I'm very happy with the service I got on both sides of this part. So both flow medias worked pretty well. There are a few little crimps that did not get filled. I'd say we have close to 98, 99% fill of the crimps. There are just a very few here on the edge. There was a small leak here on the output side that had a little bit of an impact right underneath where my spiral tubing was. So it didn't quite get full fill of the crimps here, but just about everywhere else, it looks fantastic. And I will give you a photo to uh, look at and you'll see that it's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. For the next few tests that I do, I'm going to be using this flow media. There's another reason that I think I'm really going to like it. And that's when I start using cores on my samples. So I'll have carbon fiber, core, and carbon fiber. And the reason I'm going to like this is that this flow media will form around these curves that I'm going to be putting in here much better than, for example, this commercial flow media, which is much stiffer. And in fact, I think it'll do even better than the insect screen. The insect screen wants to do a little bit of folding up and bubbling up coming around this corner. So we'll do some more testing on this and make sure it's really going to work for us. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little composite test. 
There are certainly going to be more on the way. I still got a lot more to learn before we really get into uh, working on the large parts that we're going to be doing. For example, the wing skins. But I'm not going to wait until I'm an expert before we start making parts. We got a few more items to take care of before I can start making parts. The thing I want to start with will be a rudder. But before I make the rudder, we got to know what the loads are going to be on the rudder. And before we figure out the loads, we need to know what the aerodynamic design for the vertical stab and the rudder are going to be. So I'm working toward that as fast as I can. If you'd like to be notified of more of these type of videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And then if you click that bell button, you'll get an email notification whenever a new video comes up.